Hey folks, welcome back. Dave back here in Studio B, and we're going to play some more Stone Cold Hockey on the PC. And uh, we got, boy, we got some a lot of things to show you today. As I'm really excited that this thing is really taking off. We're getting this close to launch, okay? And it just keeps getting better and better and better. When, just when I didn't think it could get any better, it gets a little bit better. So we're going to share a little bit of um, that goodness with you tonight in anticipation for the launch. Uh, which is should be coming up shortly. I think they said uh, maybe 10 days, maybe. Like somebody said, he hasn't been this excited for Halloween since 1984. Um, so I don't, was that a horror movie reference? Was that when you were a kid? I'm not, I'm not really sure. <laughs> but anyway, ID Jess, good to hear from you. Uh, I take it that you survived the hurricane down there. I heard it was pretty bad. So I'm hoping that you're doing okay down there. I've been kind of checking in from time to time on your stuff. <clears throat> but if you haven't seen this game, this is fantastic. This game is fantastic. <clears throat> First off, I do want to thank. Our Patreons of the channel and of Digital to Dice, thank you so much, guys, for supporting us for the last three years or so. Well, you know, the, the Patreons haven't supported us for three years. The Patreons are very new. But anybody that's listened to the show and the channel for the last three or four years, thank you so much for doing so. And again, thanks to the Patreons who help us pay the bills. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, no, things are not doing good for me. Uh, both of my dogs needed surgery. And um, then today my truck broke down on the highway and... Uh, stress me out so um, i have to take tomorrow off from work uh it just died and just was smoking everywhere and, and it luckily it started again on its own so i didn't get hit and i got it to the dealership but i was like this when i got to the dealership so it's been a tough day gary Banks stopping by hi there so let's get right to this game shall we <clears throat> so let me um get to the the game at hand and uh oh what do we have here we have the ccl that's right we have the eight teams from the CCL, Thunder Bay, Dayton, Tulsa, Rockford, Saskatoon, Springfield, Regina, and Indianapolis. Yes, we have the fictional teams. And Bernard says, can't believe you rekindled my interest in hockey. Thanks, Dave. Oh, okay. that's good to hear. I'm glad. I'm glad that I uh, I got the hockey's a fun game. It really is. I was just watching some East Coast Hockey League tonight on my iPad because it's a uh, I just like watching all the different leagues. So anyway, here we are. So we don't have any games played. Here's the schedule. They all have logos. Look at that. Look at how cool that is. Is each team has the logos now for the fictional. So the fictional is here. So if you were to exit out of here, the fictional is here, ready to go. And this is uh this is great. I really can't uh, wait to do this. Where is Saskatoon? It's in Canada somewhere. Don't ask me where, but it's in Canada somewhere. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Um, still fighting a cold here, of course, that figures. But I got my nice decaf coffee here. I got my Bruins hat. And we should be ready to go as Kenny stops by as well. In as well as Robbie. I'm sorry. It just helps the throat when I uh, have a nice warm coffee. That's how I do my movie readings is with with uh, decaf coffee. All right, so let's get right to it. So uh, we're going to go to our schedule. And here's the one I want to play. I want to play Dayton in Springfield because Dayton's supposed to be a real bad team, okay? In fact, let, let's check them out here. So Dayton is, um, a let me see, a four at home and road is one. Oh, man. They are horrible on the road. They are really bad, really bad. And who are they playing? They're playing Springfield, who's 11 at home. Oh, <laughs> oh, Dayton could be the new Golden Seals. Yes, it is. P-Jets here. Um. Saskatchewan for Saskatoon. We're in Saskatchewan. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so anyway, so let's go to this. We're going to play the bad teams. We're going to play Dayton. Dayton is the the worst team in the league. They're dysfunctional. And if you bought the board game, you you do have the uh, the little manual that comes with it that tells tells you all about the teams. And Dayton is not having a good time. So let's play. It's going to be Dayton going into Springfield. Now the first thing I notice is the control is one to six. It is one to six and seven to twenty for Springfield. So, yeah, Dayton, the Dayton Bombers are really bad. In net, we're gonna go with the. Uh, they're gonna start the backup, and we'll we'll let it go. We'll go with the backup, Stanley Dubois. Uh, Dubois, um, he's a goal at five, and again, that's seventy-five to ninety-nine, and it automatically picked that right there. So that's fine. We'll go with that, and uh, they're gonna go with the starter, who's an eight, Jonathan Coleman. We'll start at home for Springfield Ozarks. 
<sighs> it's going to be ugly, folks. I know it is. But anyway, let's get going here. I'm just going to let the game... Again, you can roll your own dice in this game if you want. I'm just going to let uh, the game play it out. So here we go. Kicking things off here. We are five minutes into the game. And we're going to have a uh, control check. One to six for Dayton. Nope, that's going to go to Springfield. And the defense for Dayton is a five. So anything above a five is going to be a chart A. Ooh, it's a six. It's chart A. And here we go. So Springfield on the attack. Chart A, a 65. And that's going to be a crease chance for Scott Long. All righty. Scott Long's going to take the chance here. And let's go. Scott Long puts it in. And now if you noticed, one of the things they just added, peeps, is if you see down the bottom, they added the full name. So the goal for Springfield scored by Scott Long and assisted Jim Doherty. So just so you know, they have changed it. Somebody requested that, and they added the full names. Now, in the box score, I believe it's just going to show the initial to keep it tidy. So, yeah, S. Long from J. Doherty. So in the box score, it's going to just be uh, the initial. But in the game, when the game is scored, you'll see the full names now. Yes. Um Doug stops by. Yes, this game is looking good. And every day uh, I check my email box and it just gets better and better and better. And so right off the bat, they beat poor Stanley Dubois. And Scott Long makes it one nothing Springfield. And if you notice, too, they did fix it in the box score here that uh, they did change the, the time. It used to be a countdown time in the box score now. I believe this is what they're going to go with. Um, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, it's the time of the goal was 4.58. So you can see on the left, it was uh, at the 15-minute mark counting down because that's how the game plays. It counts down. So we we're in the 15-minute mark in that area, and the game does a random time. So it was 4.58, the time of the goal. And that was something new they added as well. <clears throat> All right, so let's continue on here. So it's one nothing already. Things aren't looking good for Dayton and their coach. I should have... I should have um, Grab the, the the chart here. It's 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 on it's in Studio A, but I could have like read the coach's name and just had some fun with it tonight. But anyway, ooh, it's only one off the clock. We're gonna have a control check. That's gonna go to Springfield again, and it's another chart A. And this time it's Anthony Rhodes. Anthony Rhodes scores just like that. Rhodes, Kevin Hernandez, and Jim Darty getting the assist. And oh my, it is tough times here for Dayton. They're down two nothing already. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be ugly, folks. It's going to be ugly for the Bombers. And poor Stanley Dubois in the net. Two goals already. Four off to the... We're going to have a puck battle this time, so maybe Dayton can get something going here. And Springfield delivers a hit, and Dayton delivers a hit. Okay. So we have uh, each team taking a stamina hit, so now they're down the nine. So no goals scored on that play. All right, six minutes off the clock. That's actually good news for Dayton. They want the shortest game possible. We're going to have another puck battle, and this one's going to be... Uh, 58, and let's see, the bat The team trailing hustles to win possession. They get to attack A. Ooh, so Dayton, with the uh, the puck battle chart being in their favor, they're going to get a uh, chart A attempt here. So it's going to be Kyle Morrow trying to get Dayton on the board. A 50, and that's going to be, what do we got here, a point chance. Or, no, it's 7 or 8. No, their attack is a 5. Oh, so they needed a 7 or 8 for a point chance. Otherwise, the goalie saw it all the way. So they get an attack chart A, and it leads to absolutely nothing. <clears throat> Another minute off to clock. Oh, it's a long period for Dayton here on the road. This fictional stuff is fun, folks. This just arrived today, and I've been having a blast with it. All right, so we're going to go a control battle. Oh, this time Dayton gets it. Ew, but they can't beat the defensive nine, so it's going to be a chart D, and there's going to be grinding action along the boards. Nothing happens for Dayton on this one here. And still in the first period here, a minute to go, and we're going to have a puck battle, and this time we're going to go to the enforcer table. And if let me see. If the high result is an enforcer, we deal two hits. Here we go. So it's going to be 10 for Dayton and 18. So Springfield delivers two hits. And the stamina now for Dayton is down to seven. Oh, boy. Poor Dayton. Really, poor Dayton. All right. So let's continue on. And that ends the first period. So the score at the end of one, it is 2-0 Springfield Ozarks over the Dayton Bombers. Long and Rhodes have the goal. So let's go to the second, shall we? And that's how fast this game plays. All righty, second period action here at the Springfield Coliseum. I don't know. We'll figure it out. 
Uh, two off the clock. We have a control check. It's going to go to Springfield. It's going to be chart A and another goal. This time it's Kevin Hernandez, assisted by Anthony Rhodes and Wade Vachon. And it's 3 nothing Springfield. And we knew this was going to be bad, and it is. Six minutes off the clock. Good news for Dayton. Another puck battle. And this time we're going to have a, a minor penalty here after the aggression check. Seven and four. So it was a minor penalty on Dayton. They deal a hit, so the stamina comes down to eight for Springfield. However, they go on the power play Springfield does. So Dayton, see if they can kill this one off. Here we go. And this is going to be a crease chance for Danny Lindman. I don't know if he's any relationship to the uh, singer of Ramstein. Um, but here we go. And his chance is a save by Dubois. Dubois is a five. All he needs is a two. And, yeah, now hopefully a uh, highlight heyday. So hopefully the fictional teams come with a game, love to play as the Thunder Bay Lake has. I'm not 100% sure. It's unclear what the price is and um, what you're going to get with the game. That has not been told to us yet. Uh, all we've been allowed to do right now is show off the game, and it's a beauty. It really is. It's a beauty. All right, so another power play for Springfield, second half of that power play. And it's going to be uh, attacking stamina graded. Yes, a crease chance. It's a crease chance for Anthony Rhodes. Rhodes on the power play, and it's turned aside by Dubois. And I, what I want to do is I want to turn this um, – transparency down a little bit there we go now when i do that it's a little bit less transparent i think i might even want to go more than that how about that there we go all righty so let's continue on here in the second period halfway through the game three nothing springfield over dayton we kind of expected this folks three minutes off the clock control check go to springfield call him a and this is going to be a crease chance for Hernandez. Hernandez shoots this one. Easy save by Dubois. And we play on. Another minute off the clock. We have a puck battle this time. It's going to be a minor penalty on Dayton. A big hit there, but it's a dirty hit. So the stamina is even at seven now. But Springfield will go back on the man advantage. Here we go. It's going to be Lindman with it now. He has the puck. Danny Lindman. And, no, it's a big check, so another hit. So the stamina from Springfield goes down. So Dayton playing dirty now, down by three. Now the last power play chance here. This is going to be, let's see, is the attacking stamina greater? No, so it's going to be a point chance for Scott Huff. Scott Huff from the outside shoots this one, and he scores. He rolls a 12 from the point, and Scott Huff scores on the power play. Hernandez and Brock Riblet will get the assist. And it's now 4 nothing, and this one's getting away from Dayton in a hurry. Dayton could be the new Cleveland Spiders here on the channel. Just saying. <clears throat> Down to the last minute here or so of the second period. Control check. It goes to Springfield. Column A. Shot score. Taylor Mercer from Patrick Mueller. Mueller? Mueller? And it's 5 nothing Springfield. Woo-hoo. And that'll end the period. So three goals in a second for Springfield. Hernandez, Huff, and Mercer. And that is that. So let me go to my box score here. So Hernandez, Huff, and Mercer. Yep. So it's showing the uh, the actual time here. On the game score, I guess it was showing the, um, the counting time down. And this is showing counting time up. Just just we're clear about that. And so let me see here. So... Um, Five nothing. Let's go to the third. Let's wrap this up here in, in Springfield. One off the clock. It's going to be a puck battle. We're going to crash the net. So we're going to do an aggression check, and it's going to go to Dayton. They're going to deliver two hits, and they're going to get a chance in the crease. This is Muhammad Warren. Muhammad Warren shot, and that's going to be a save as the goalie is an eight. Jonathan Coleman still hanging on to the shutout here. <laughs> And Steve Towers says, who's put the spring in Springfield? Well, well, they're playing Dayton, and Dayton is the worst team in the league, and they are showing it. You see, their control is one, and their attack is five, and the defense is five. That is not very good at all. So it's still 5 nothing here as Muhammad Warren is denied by Jonathan Coleman. And we got a puck battle coming up here, and it's going to be a aggression check, and Dayton delivers a hit. So the stamina of Springfield's down to three, so they're really in trouble with stamina-wise. But they go on the power play with 15 minutes left in control of this one, 5 nothing. 
It's going to be Wade Vachon with the puck. Vachon fires and scores on the rebound. And Springfield leads 6 nothing. Now, we just need Al Red Sox fan to come in and try to kick the extra point. For the Wade Vachon from Anthony Rhodes and Kevin Hernandez. And it's a six-pack now for Springfield. And here, now, they're not going to fire the coach already. It's only one game, Robbie. Just one game. Give them at least two. Uh, let's see. Off the draw. Two minutes. It's going to be a puck battle. Uh, let's see. Both teams deal a hit. And we have a fight. So Shaston Viktorovich and Brian Blomquist are going to battle it out here. And let's see what happens here. Five minutes for fighting. The puck battle threshold is reduced by one, and each team delivers a hit. So the tension is escalating here. What in the name of Reggie Dunlop is going on over here, says Cleveland baseball fan. You are exactly right. It is six nothing. We, we didn't think it would be this bad, folks. So you can see that uh, we have Viktorovich and Blomquist in the box for each team. So we got 12 minutes to play here in Springfield. Five minutes off the clock. Another puck battle. Well, the puck battle's down to 10, so we get a 50-50 chance. Actually, a little greater than 50-50 chance of having a puck battle here. And we're going to crash the net again. Aggression check. This time it goes to Dayton, and they deliver two hits. So Springfield's stamina down to one, and Kyle Morrow's going to get the chance, and he is turned aside by Coleman, who's still pitching the shutout in this game. Holy cow. Here we go. Seven minutes to play. Now it's down to five. Control check. Oh, this time Dayton gets it. Can they roll higher than a nine? No, it's going to be chart D, and that's going to be both teams take a hit. Uh, Dayton, now Springfield can't get on any further, so the stamina is going crazy here in this game. Uh, do we get free chili from Wendy's if Springfield scores seven? I don't know. In Worcester, I almost wore my Worcester shirt when I did this. Uh, in Worcester, we used to get free french fries from McDonald's that they scored four, and when they got the three, here's a funny story. Here's a go back in time. Where's my thing? All right, where's my thing? All right, here we go. All right. It, when they got the three goals in Worcester, there was a lady who would always go, we want fries. And that meant we wanted a fourth goal, so we'd get the free French fry coupon from McDonald's. Funny little story there. <clears throat> so you might get some fries. I don't know if you're going to get free chili, but here we go. Uh, one minute off the clock. We got a control check. It's going to go to Springfield. Ooh, this time def the Dayton defense comes through. And, yes, yeah, some tough defending there. So they hold Springfield off. Still 6 nothing though. And two minutes off the clock. Still time to play. Control check. Going to Springfield again. Column A. Sean Parrish puts it home. And that is the extra point as he scores on the attack 11 as an automatic goal. And uh, it should be a free beer if Dayton scores. Yeah, you're right. You know, a free car, you know, something because they ain't going to score. And that is that. The beating continues here in Springfield. It is 7 nothing, folks. And that ends the game. Third period goals by Vachon and Parrish end it. And let's end this one and get out of town. Ooh, that was ugly. 7 nothing. We can go to the report. I love how you can click on the report here. And you can see there really wasn't much going on for Dayton over there on the left. They had a couple of no shots and some penalties. But aside from that, it was uh, it was tough. And, again, if you want, you can even print out this box score here. You can share it on, you know, different social media if you like. Or print it out in the, the printer if you like. But that is that. So that was a tough one there, folks. All right. Let's see if we can get a better game going. Let's go to uh, Saskatoon. We have Rockford taking on Saskatoon. So a little bit better here. The control is 7 versus the control of 8. So Saskatoon with a slight advantage. Uh, the attack of the defense. So this should be a pretty even game here. Uh, in net, we're going to go with Yanni Lakem. And he's a 7 in net for the Rockford Barnstormers. And for the Saskatoon Stallions, we have in net. It's going to be Brooks Gunderson. And uh, he's a 6. So... We want fries. Yeah, that was a cool story. A curly fries. Steve, Steve McDonald's doesn't have curly fries. I don't. Well, I don't think. I mean, this is back in the '90s, in the early 2000s. So I don't think they did. But yeah, you would be walking out the door, and they would just hand you the slip for a free small fry at McDonald's. You know. So, but how often you walk in McDonald's just get fries? Usually, it's going to be uh, you get the the Big Mac meal that comes with fries. But I suppose you could get a second fry. All right, so let's get going in here. It's Rockford, Saskatoon, opening week of the C. CL. Here we go. And four off the clock. We're going to do a puck battle. Well, the puck battle's 13 in this game. and we So there's not going to be a lot of puck battles between these two teams, but we have one right off the bat. And we're going to go to the enforcer table. Home presence. So Rockford 
delivers, let's see, uh, if no home enforcer, and there's no home enforcer, so the visiting team is going to give the hit. So that's why Rockford delivers the hit, and it is uh, now a stamina nine for Saskatoon. Let's continue on. Five minutes off the clock, and we're going to get a control check. The controls be even, 1 to 10, 11 to 20. is a very even game, and it's going to go to the visitors. Here's the Rockford Bondstormers. Chart A, James Lee. Any relation to Bruce Lee or Getty Lee or Sarah Lee? I don't know, but he's going to get a crease chance. James Lee scores. And the first goal in Rockford history goes to James Lee, Artie Banks, and Craig Rice on the assist. And the visiting team takes a one to nothing lead. <laughs> Steve, Steve Town. Well, in my fictional world, the midfield archers serve curly fries whenever the Minutemen score four goals. <sighs> okay, if you want to play that game, Steve, if you want to play that game, and let's play that game, in my fictional world, if the um, Saskatoon team, right, if the Saskatoon Stallions score just one goal, I get fries. How about that? You don't need to score four. In my fictional world, one goal gets you fries. So... Beat that one. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so one nothing Rockford here in the first period. We got five minutes off the clock. Control check. Going back to Rockford again. And they're going to go on to attack. Attack A, Tyler Cooper shoots. And let me see. Pay the price. The attacking stamina is seven or more. They take a hit for a crease chance. So Tyler Cooper takes the hit. He goes into the crease area. He is going to need... Ooh, 0-65 to 65 is a goal. 0-65, to 65 and he scores! Tyler Cooper with Rice getting another assist in this game. And not only they take the hit, but they get the goal, and Rockford goes up 2-0 here in Saskatoon. <laughs> the Saskatoon owner must be loaded. Like loaded fries? <laughs> Maybe that's what we should do in the fictional universe. One goal gets you loaded fries. That'd be awesome. All righty, so 2 nothing, Rockford here, minute off the clock. We're going to have another puck battle, and uh-oh, uh-oh, we got some major penalties coming up here. And it's going to go on Saskatoon, but we have an injury here on Rockford. Let's see what the injury is. So it's going to be minus one on the attack, Ooh. but it's going to be a five-minute power play, and the puck battle is reduced by two. All this, all kinds of things happening on that now. Now it's going to get nasty out there. So the major penalty to Briggs for five minutes. So Rockford up by two, and this thing's going to get nasty. Uh, tomorrow in Dayton, fan team tryouts. Look for that fan that can score a goal. That's right. Or maybe important poutine for Quebec. <laughs> we can do poutine as well. We can do poutine as well. All right, so it's a five-minute major for Rockford. They lead by two. James Lee, who has a goal, has the puck. And no, it's going to be a nice kill, so they kill off a couple of minutes. And now there's only three minutes left in the major. It's going to be Jason Ed Edwards. Edwards in the crease. Edwards shoots, and he scores. So they pick up a goal on the five-minute major. Edwards from Stepan Mednovich. And just like that, it's 3 nothing, and it's not a good start for Saskatoon. Poutine is like French fries covered in gravy and sometimes like bacon bits, I think it is. It is it is just a mess of goodness, poutine. It is really good. I just had it a few years ago myself. A friend of mine's like, hey, let's get the poutine. It's like, what the heck's poutine? He's like, oh, you're going to love it. And I did. <clears throat> All righty, so we're in the first period. 3 nothing Rockford. I thought this was going to be an even game, but it is not. It is nasty here. And let's go. I need to turn my fan on. Hang on one second here. All this talk about poutine made it really hot down here in Studio B, let me tell you. All righty, so we're back, and it's 3-0 uh, here. And uh, fries with gravy and cheese curds. Okay, yeah, it's something like that. I think the one I had had either bacon or sausage on it or something like that. It was it was, it was, was good. <laughs> we, we continue the power play here, the major power play for Rockford. And it's going to be Jason Edwards with the puck now. But they kill it off. Ooh, they do a good job. So they kill off the last two minutes of that, and they are back to full strength. So the Bondstormers do get one on the major here. And... Now we're in the second period. So we got a, um, I didn't get the summary at the end of that period. That was kind of weird. All right, so we got a uh, control check here. Going to Rockford again. And it's going to be attack chart 
A, as the defense in Saskatoon is only a six, which is decent, but seven beats it. Oh, boy, here we go. Jason Edwards looking to make it four nothing, And it's going to be attack is five. Ooh, remember they lost their attack. They lost one attack earlier in this game because they had injury. They did get a goal on the power play, but they did take an injury, so that's going to bump them out um, down to a five now. So it's going to be tougher to get the attack chance. So absolutely nothing happening on that one there. A minute off the clock. We have a puck battle. And makeup call. There's going to be a penalty on Rockford. So Saskatoon goes on the power play, and they try to get on the board here in the second period. It's going to be Marshall Duke, the Duke of New York, A number one. What movie is that from? What movie is that from? And it's going to be a big hit. And Rockford delivers a hit, so the stamina now. Saskatoon goes down to eight. Last chance on the power play. Deflected pass. And that'll end the threat. So we go back to five on five, six minutes off the clock. We got six minutes to go in a second. Control check, going to Saskatoon. Chart A, Greg Chandler trying to get the home team on the board. Chandler scores! Owen McClellan and Kenneth Briggs picking up the assist, and Chandler gets the home team their first goal in franchise history, and it's now 3-1. to one. You also have to have fries with vinegar and salt at some point. Hmm, okay. Well, you know, anything with fries is pretty good to me. And the phrase comes in. He's our winner. Hang on a sec. I have a special sound for you. Hang on a sec. We have a we have a winner here. Sorry about that. That's the best I could with that. Yes, phrase comes in. That was Escape from New York. Yep, Escape from New York. Yep, Duke of New York, A number one. And Cleveland baseball fans have fictional fries. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, fictional fries. That's a good one there. All righty, so it's now 3-1, to one, and that'll end the period. On Well, this is the last play of the period here. We have a control check going to Saskatoon. Chart A, Joseph Phillips at the end of the period. Joseph Phillips, no. It could be a penalty shot. No, it's going to be a crease chance. All righty, so... Let me see. So we have a 99 with a 7. It's going to be, is the attack greater than the opposing defense? Yes, it is. Crease chance. So Joseph Phillips trying to cut it to 3-2 to two at the end of the period here. He needs 0-58. Uh, to 58. He scores! Right at the end of the period with three seconds left in that period. It's going to be Phillips. With the goal, Carter, Josh Carter getting the assist, and the home team on a late goal has pulled to within one. So we do have a good one here in Saskatoon tonight, folks. All righty. So the Bondstorm was raced out to a 3 nothing lead. Now it's 3-2, to two, and we're going to do a control check. It's going to be Rockford. Column A, Stepan Mednovic. Mednovic, uh, uh-oh, minor penalty on defending team. So the high speed of Mednovich forces Saskatoon to take a hooking penalty, and Rockford goes back on the man advantage. Reading from the first column, power play. Oh, no, it's going to be the PK column. So the advantage here is going to be the power play is five, the PK is six, so we're going to switch it one column in the, the penalty kill advantage. Okay. And so a sliding shot is blocked. Nice play there by the Saskatoon penalty killer. Last chance on the power play. McGuire in the box. It's going to be a crease chance for Jason Edwards on the power play. He needs just 0-65, to 65 and no, it's turned aside. Brooks Gunderson keeping Saskatoon in this game with a super save, and that ends the penalty. Minute off the clock. There's 11 minutes to play. Saskatoon trailed by three. It's now 3-2. to two. It's going to be control to Saskatoon. Chart A, Devin Hall trying to tie the game. Pay the price. If the attacking stamina is seven or more, they take a hit, and they get a crease chance. So they will take the hit and get the crease chance. Hall in the crease. Needs a 0-58 to 58 to tie the game, and he scores! He takes the hit. He's shaken up, but he scores the goal. Steve Combs and Ragnar Bjornstad on the assist, and Saskatoon has come back from three down. We told you this was going to be a good one. It didn't start off good, but it's a good one here with 11 to go, and now eight to go here in the third period. It's going to be a puck battle, and it's going to be battle back. The trailing team hustles to win possession. If tied, the higher aggression team deals a hit. And let's see, Rockford is the higher aggression team, so they'll deal the hit. So now the stamina is 7-6 in favor of Rockford. 
All right, the game is tied here. Six minutes off the clock, two minutes to play. Another puck battle. Minor penalty on Saskatoon. Oh, it's a late call. And, yeah, one more goal for the Fries. But it's a late penalty on Saskatoon, and so Rockford goes on the man advantage. Here we go. They'll get two cracks at this on the five on four. Nathan Hicks with a puck, and he scores. A one-timer by Hicks, and he put it by Gunderson. And Rockford get out to a 3 nothing lead, watched it vanish, but now has the lead back in the dying moments of the game. So we're going to pull the goalie here. We have an empty net, and here we go to the empty net chart. we got a minute to play. Three. This is going to be it. It's the last dis ditch attempt for Saskatoon. The goalie is out, and they roll a 66, and that ends the game. And the fries are going to go to Rockford. It's only the home team that gets the fries usually, but that is that. And so what a game that was. Let's check that out. Look at this. Rockford, 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 three to nothing. Saskatoon, 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 three to three. And then Rockford scores late on the power play, 103 to play in the game as Hicks puts it home. And that is a win right there for Rockford. So they win that one four to three. We're going to save the Thunder Bay game for last. So let's go to the, let's go to Indianapolis, Tulsa. It's the Comets and the Lugnuts. Here we go. And they're going to start Philip Russo in the net. And over here, Randall LeDuc. Here we go. Comets and the Lugnuts. We got two minutes off the clock. It's going to be a control check. The control slightly in favor of Indianapolis. They have a control of nine compared to five for Tulsa. But Tulsa's going to win this one here with a control check of three. Look at that. I think I said Indianapolis got no. Tulsa gets it. Tulsa turned green. The control turns green on the left, so that means they have it. So the defense is a five. It's not a very good defense for either team. They're both a five. Oh, they roll a four. So good defense by Indianapolis here. So it's going to be David Gronberg with a chance from the defensive chart, and that's turned aside. So no shot. So wait, the defending stamina 7 plus, no shot. Yep, okay, so there's no shot on the play. So three minutes off the clock. We got a puck, uh, uh, control check here. That goes to Indianapolis, and they'll read off a column D too. So Tulsa coming up with some defenses. Rick Terrebaugh gets a chance here, and no shot again. Each team's stamina a little too high early in the game. Let's roll this again. Five minutes off the clock. We're halfway through the first period. Control check. Goes to Indianapolis. And again, the defense coming up big. They're not known for defense, these comments, but they're coming up big. And Mick Funderburk, his, uh, it's going to be both teams take a hit as they crash into the board. So the stamina coming down for both teams here. Three off the clock. Seven to go in the period. That's our first puck battle, I believe it is. We're going to go to the enforcer table. And home presence. Do we have an enforcer here? No, we don't. There's no. So Tulsa delivers the hit. Oh, boy. And Hockey Fan 76, are the fictional teams now on the PC? The fictional teams are now on the PC. It's unclear whether that's what's coming in the game or not, but um, I'm showing off the fictional teams tonight, and this has been a fun one here, especially that Dayton game. <laughs> here we go. So... Uh, we continue on here. It's five minutes off the clock here in period one. It's going to be a control check. Going to Indianapolis. Now we're going to get a column A chance. Jeff Spangler from column A. Is the attacking stamina eight or nine? Yes, it's going to be a slot chance for Jeff. Spangler in the slot. Oh, the goalie, though. Russo's only a four. Wow, zero to 67, and the Lugnuts take the lead. And no, he rolls a 99. Anybody can make the save except the open net. Even you can make the save out there. Holy cow. And yeah, Dayton would have made the save too. And they turn him aside on a slot chance. So Philip Russo, not known for his goaltending like that when he comes up big. All right, so we're back in action here. And that'll uh, be the last. This will be the last roll of the period. It's going to be a control check. Going to go to Tulsa. Tulsa's going to get a shot. A William Lee is going to get the chance. Lee, again, is he any relation to Getty Lee or Bruce Lee or Sarah Lee? General Lee? William Lee is going to get the chance. 37, and he scores. The attack nine scores automatically on the breakaway. And William Lee took the pass from Daniel Mueller. And it's one nothing Tulsa. As the crowd boos here in a late goal. Just 17 seconds left in this first period. And the Tulsa Comets 
Take the lead. I almost called them the Tulsa Oilers. <laughs> this game is going to change game. Yeah. I, I don't know what the price is, point's going to be. That I really don't know. I really don't know. Um, and I'm not sure what's coming with the game and how much the season's are. I, I just, I, that hasn't been told to us yet. Keep an eye on the um, the newsletter, though. The newsletter does a good job. No, Nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee. Nobody doesn't like Getty Lee. No one doesn't like Bruce Lee. Right? All right. Second period action here. Six off the clock. Tulsa in the lead. We're going to have a control check. It's going to go to Indianapolis. And they're going to get uh, finally attack shot A. Michael Allen, one of the local guys here, local native here of Indiana. He's on the team. And he's going to get a chance here, and he scores in front of the hometown crowd. Michael Allen from Blake Jameson and Roland Matt. And Indianapolis gets their first goal in franchise history at home, and they will tie this game at one. Three off the clock. We're going to con control check. Go to Tulsa. And it's going to be chart A, Packy Evans. Oh, boy, Packy Evans. He was a late sign here in the season. He, he held out, but Packy Evans is here, giving Tulsa a chance to take the lead. From chart A, 92. Is the stamina 8 plus? Yes, it is. A crease chance. Packy Evans in the crease. Oh, boy, the goalie is a 10. Randall LaDuke is a 10. So only a 0 to 37 for Packy Evans will give him the lead. No, it's turned aside easily by LaDuke. And now uh, we play on three minutes off the clock, eight minutes to go. The puck battle is 14. I think that's the highest the puck battle can go. So these two teams are not very aggressive at all. It's going to go to Indianapolis again. Chart A, this is William Ferguson from Chart A. He scores. The attack of 10 is just too much for Philip Russo and Ferguson from Allen in Grenier. And you can see now we see the full names when they score the goal. Again, on the box score, it's just the uh, the, the initial and last name to make it kind of tidy here. But when it first comes up, you do get full names now. So that is really cool. That was a user suggestion on one of my videos, and that was added in. So thank you for the suggestion, and it goes well. Three home team goals for a free Sara Lee. You never know. I don't know what they have in Indianapolis here. You know, I went to Indianapolis once. I drove across country as I, as I go back in time. Where's, where's my uh, where's my uh, my my harp? Here we go. And we we had a breakfast one morning out there in Indianapolis, or lunch or something. And uh, in the salt shakers, they had rice, and I never seen that before. And this was back in 1986. And I guess they put the rice in the salt shakers so the salt wouldn't um, like bind together. I had never seen that before. I was like, what's with the rice and the salt shakers? And they're like, oh, that's so the, so the salt doesn't all just clump together. Interesting. I don't know if they still do that in Indianapolis, but that always sticks out in my mind. You guys get all kinds of crazy stories on a Friday night. Minute off the clock. We got a puck battle here. Let's go to the agitator table. And does a visiting team have an agitator? Yes, they do. That's Randall Wilkes. And so Tulsa delivers a hit. And we play on. And, oh, that's a crease chance and a goal. Packy Evans comes through for Tulsa. So the hit happened. Everyone was looking at the player on the ground. And Packy Evans went in and scores for Tulsa, beating LaDuke, who's a goalie of 10. And the three is going to score most every time. And just like that, Tulsa has tied the game at two. And the crowd is not happy here whatsoever in Indianapolis. We're down to two minutes to play in the second period. A puck battle here. Minor penalty on Indianapolis as Tulsa just has the momentum and all they can do is hook him. So Allen's in the box for two. And we're going to read off. Oh, boy, the Tulsa power play is really good. Look at that. It's a nine to a five. So they're reading off the uh, second best column. That's a po the power play three, four column. I think there's one more column, five. But this is going to be a good power play here, I think. Uh, can you add custom sounds? Um I think you – I don't know about each team, but as you can see, I have the NHL 94 sounds. I don't know if you can hear them or not because I can't hear the sound in my headphones. I've added the NHL 94 sounds. Um, it does come with regular sounds, and I believe you can add whatever horn you want for the visitors and the home team so you can have different ones, and you can probably put in whatever you want. Now, I don't know if you can customize them from each team. That I'm not sure, but I know that I have my own sounds in this game. And you can do your own pitches, too, as you saw in the last video. I had the, the Canadians and the – the Bruins as well. So, and uh, Fanner stops by here, and uh, Gary stops by as well. And the dice animations are kind of cool. And you can roll your own dice. 
If you want to roll dice on the table and punch them in, you can do that as well. I find it's a little quicker just to do it here when I'm streaming. So, um, and you can hear the sounds. Okay, good. But yes, you can um, you can add your own sounds in the annex. I I go with the no. I'm looking for the old king sound. It was a siren. It was like woo 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 woo. Every time I watch the Bruins highlights of Orr in L.A. when they scored, no matter who scored, they had the siren. I just can't find it. All right, so it's going to be a power play for Tulsa. Allen in the box. Tulsa. And it's going to be a slot chance for Packy Evans, who just tied the game. Packy Evans, oh boy, he's going to need a 0-25, to 25, and he scores! Evans on the power play, and he was worth the wait in signing him as Andre Makamovich, Maximovich, rather, will get the assist. And late in the period, Tulsa scores again, and they take the lead, and that'll end it. So... Indianapolis with a couple of early goals. Tulsa with a couple of late goals. Both coming from Packy Evans, who could be my new favorite hockey player. Uh, and uh, the Dummy Hoy is my favorite baseball player. Now, Packy Evans is going to be my favorite hockey player. All right, so we're in the third period now. Four minutes come off the clock. We got a puck battle here, folks. And it's going to be crashing the net. So let's check to see. Um, so we're going to deal a hit. And if they haven't enforced it, they get a crease chance. And it's going to go to Indianapolis, but I don't think they have an enforcer. No, they don't. Neither team has an enforcer, actually. Um, I'm not sure why they get a crease One hit. They also want to. I'm not sure why they would get a crease chance, but they're going to get a crease chance. So Irvin Filipovich. And he scores for Indianapolis to tie it up. So somehow the puck squared it over to him, and he will take that gladly. I didn't think they had a, a guy over here, but somehow it works out. So it's going to work out for a goal. And the uh, Tulsa team is arguing the point, but it's to no avail. And the game is tied at 3-3. Three to three. 11 minutes to play. We got another puck battle here. We got an aggressive aggression check. And minor penalty on Tulsa. So Tulsa is incensed. And they commit a stupid penalty. And Evans is in the box. Is that Packy Evans in the box? I think it might be. So he gets a couple of goals, but now he ends up in the box. So he's a double-edged sword, that guy. He really is. Spangler with a chance, and he scores. He tips home the rebound, and Spangler puts Indianapolis up 4-3. to three. Packy Evans comes out of the box, and he's slamming his stick. He is not happy, and a couple of quick goals here has put Indianapolis in the lead. Five minutes to play. We have a control check. Going to Indianapolis, column A, Mick Funderburk. This is a household name. Funderburk. From the slot, Funderburg scores. Nice setup by Agnes Brochu, and it's now 5-3. to three. How many goals in a row is that? That is, holy cow, that's three goals in a row in the third period here as they bust open a 2-2 tie. Wait a second. Oh, yeah, that was a, it was, they were trailing 3-2. to two. I'm sorry, I didn't see that first period goal by Tulsa. So Indianapolis trailing 3-2 to two going into the period, three goals in a row, and they lead 5-3. to three. And now the Tulsa team is, they are not happy with the officials in this game. I can tell you that right now. Here we go. Five minutes to play. Should we pull the goalie? Sure, we're down by two. We'll pull the goalie. So we're in crunch time here. In the empty net. And no chance. We continue on. A minute 40 to play. Now down to a minute to play. Now the empty net chance. Another save is made by LeDuc. Comets chipping away at this. They need two here. The shot is deflected away. Last gasp here. It's going to be empty net chance. No, and that ends the game. And Indianapolis with a strong third period takes this one 5-3. to three. So we have a blowout here. Springfield with a 7-0 win over Dayton. Rockford on the road getting it done in Saskatoon. And then Indianapolis with a big comeback here. And now with our final game of the night is Thunder Bay going into Regina. So here we go. It's the Lakeheads taking on the Roughnecks. And then we got a free Sarah Lee. It's Packy from Southie. <laughs> only you would know that. Me and you, right? We're the only guys that know what a Packy is. <laughs> Good one. I like that. I like that. But I, I got friends of mine that when I was doing the video game show, they would fly out from, from California. And, and they were like, Packy? Bubbler? What, what is this foreign language? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Of course everybody knows what a Packy and a Bubbler is, right? All righty, so we got Davey Gray going in net. They're going to go with the backup here. He's only a goalie of four. Actually, both goalies are four on Thunder Bay. So their goaltender is tough, and their control is very tough as well. So they're a tough team here. Meanwhile, oh, my gosh, Regina, control of 12 and a goalie of 11. 
Oh man, so Thunder Bay is going to be just as bad as Dayton. So we, so I thought we were going to have a, a good game here tonight, but it's not looking good for Thunder Bay, folks. Renee Michaud will be in net. He's a goalie of eleven. This could be another seven nothing route. Here we go. We got four minutes off the clock. We got a puck battle here, and we're going to do a uh, aggression check, and that's going to go to Thunder Bay, who picks up the penalty. So it's a power play for Regina, and they go power play five. Look at the power play eleven. To four. So, yeah, so they're going to be off the, the best power play column possible. And it's going to be James Wilson, but they do a good job, and they kill off the penalty. So Thunder Bay, penalty killers, getting it done. We got 12 minutes to go in the period. We got a control check. That's going to go to Regina. It's going to be column A, and it's going to be Mark English for Regina. Mark English, he's going to go into the slot. All he needs is... Is zero to sixty-seven. Mark English scores. Dan Marchand and Matthew Green pick up the assists, and Regina goes up one nothing on Thunder Bay. All righty, we got three minutes off the clock here in the first. Control check back to Regina. Uh, it's going to be off the defensive shot this time. Devin Barrett having some trouble over there, and he takes a big hit. A nice play by the Thunder Bay defenseman to flatten him on the play. Minute off the clock. We got another puck battle here. Minor penalty, though, coming up to Regina. It was a nice cross check there by Ronning, who's going to go to the box. And it's going to be a power play for Thunder Bay. Four Regina goals for a free IHOP breakfast. You never know. We got to get the Denny's Grand Slam back into this somehow. That's what we got to do. Now I'm getting hungry again. I just was watching food videos. People watch people eating a lot of food on YouTube tonight. That's what I was doing before I did this. Watch, I, I, I watched a guy eat 15 hamburgers tonight. I don't know if I'm impressed or if I'm disgusted, tell you the truth. <laughs> but now we're talking food again. And I, was, I just ate dinner, too. I was like, now i got to go eat again. All right, so Ryan Russo. Well, I think I know a Ryan Russo, actually. It's kind of funny. Ryan Russo here for Thunder Bay on the power play, and he scores with the 11. He jams it home behind Michaud. Keith Gillespie getting the assist, and the game is tied. So the underdog Thunder Bay team uh, keeping close here. It's one to one. Five minutes off the clock. Another puck battle, and each team is going to deliver a hit. And there's no fight. Oh, there is a fight. Wait a sec here. A stamina of each team is seven or less. Oh boy. Uh. Maybe, maybe it's going to be after the hit that go, the stamina goes down. But we have a fight here. Matthew Leonard and Chris Tobiasen. And, yeah, no, the stamina didn't get down. Tension de-escalates. So we're going to add one to the puck battle and add one to the stamina for each. Okay, so Thunder Base had a stamina of seven. Okay, so that, that makes sense. They had a, that's just want to follow along here. Uh, do I watch Beard Meets Food? Sometimes. I don't like the guy with the beard, though, because it gets in his beard. It's kind of gross. I watch Joel Hansen. I watch Randy Santel, I watch Katina, and I watch, um, oh, you ever seen Molly Schuyler? We just watched Molly Schuyler tonight. She ate a five-pound burger in three minutes, two and a half minutes. She doesn't swallow. She doesn't chew. She just puts it in and swallows, and it's tough to watch Molly. Look, look up Molly Schuyler. It's actually S-C-U-Y-L-E-R. It's not S-K. It's S-C-U-Y-L-E-R. Molly Schuyler. <laughs> she is tough to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Doug says IHOP sounds good. It does. All right, let's continue on here with our final game of the night in our fictional league here. And um, just showing off some of the new things the game does, the fictional league, some of the uh, – oh, uh, let me show you the box score here. Again, what they did now is the time is actually counting up here. So you can see the first period goals at 737 at 1252. So it's more like a um, – a regular hockey box score. It was counting down. Cause they, you can see on the left here, it counts down because that's how the, the board game plays. But they did flip the time here. I don't know if that's going to be in the final release, if that's going to keep that or not. But for the hockey purist, that is in there now if you like that. All right, so let's continue on here in the first period, and that'll end the period. So each team with a goal, English and Ruscio and Jeepers Creepers, Thunder Bays hanging in there on the road against Regina. Here we go. Leonard and Tobias that are in the box for fighting still. Three minutes off the clock. Control's going to go to Regina. Chart A is going to be Joseph Daniel. Joseph Daniel scores. An easy goal is a perfect drop pass from Alvy McDougal. Eric Richardson will get an assist as well. And Regina takes the 2-1 to one lead here early in the second period. 
And now it's going to be a puck battle. Minor penalty called on the team with the fewest penalty minutes. So it's going to be Thunder Bay picking up the penalty, and McCarthy will go to the box. All right, so it's going to be Ingvald Jacobson. He come over from the Mata country here to play with Regina. He has the puck with it, and he is going to get a, a stamina greater than the defense. Yes, it's a crease chance. So in the crease for Jacobson, score! Jacobson makes it 3-1, to one, Regina on the power play. The lone assist going to Louis Arnold, and it's 3-1 to one here in the second period. Five off the clock. Another puck battle. Thunder Bay is not going down without a fight here, literally, and they're going to take another penalty. It's going to be Stewart. Stewart goes to the box now for two minutes, and Regina goes back on the man advantage. So the Thunder Bay coach likes to see the enthusiasm in the physical play, but you got to stay out of the box against Regina with a power play of 11. Here we go. It's going to be Louis Arnold, who assisted on the last one. It's going to be from the point because the stamina is not greater than the defense. Now, he will score, though, on a 0-51. to 51. He scores. Arnold from Gallimore, and just like that, it is 4-1. to one. So Thunder Bay is letting this get away. Uh, two minutes ago in the period, control check going to Regina. I don't think Thunder Bay's had any control checks. I, I, I'm surprised they even got a goal in this game. And it's going to be at, uh, at Jacobson again, chart A, and he scores. The attack of 10 is good enough for a goal on the breakaway. Wilson and Gallimo on the assist. And this one is turning into a route. And we want pancakes. With five goals, you, you should get pancakes and even a side of bacon, I would think, right? Although, any, anytime Thunder Bay comes to town or Dayton comes to town, I think the uh, all the... Um, the uh, the sponsors are gonna pull pull back a little bit against those two teams because they'll be they'll go broke they really will. All righty, uh, yeah, and that's the end of the second period. So all Regina here, Daniel Jacobson, Arnold, and Jacobson again, and it's five to one. The lone Thunder Bay goal coming in that first period on the power play from Russo. And so here we go. Third period action here from Regina as we conclude week one of the CCL. We'll get back and check leaders and standings before we sign off tonight. And it's going to be a puck battle here and a minor penalty on the home team. So Regina is going to go to the box now. Ray will sit for two minutes. See if Thunder Bay can get another one here on the man advantage. It's going to be Justin Camden with the puck. Camden, uh-oh, is going to be a counterattack going to be a point chance so it's going to be rob gallimo with a steal he's coming down short-handed for regina all he needs is a zero to 51 and he scores short-handed gallimo throwing salt into the wound of thunder bay and davy gray takes it on the chin and net matthew green and dan marchant on the assist and it is six to one and we have another blowout here folks so we, we, we're seeing who the better teams are and who the worser teams are here in a ccl but they come right back and score Matthew Leonard on the power play jams it in, and it's 6-2. to two. It's kind of all academic now. It's just for personal stats, but it still feels good to score. So Matthew Leonard jams that one home. Gillespie with the assist, and also Ippo Vasilevich will pick up the assist. 6-2 to two now, a minute off the clock. We got another puck battle. Uh-oh, minor penalty now on Thunder Bay. Sanger. Sanger, is that, that from Shorzy? Come on, Sanger. All righty. Power play now. Joseph Daniel with it, and he scores easily. It's 7-2, to two, and Regina is packing it on here against the poor Thunder Bay team. Again, is this the, the scouts, of the capitals of the Seals? I don't know, but it's pretty bad. Three minutes off the clock here. Another puck battle, folks, and another penalty. And Thunder Bay is just ending up in the box, and with a power play of 11, you can't do that against Regina. You just can't do it, you know? Thunder Bay, not as bad as Dayton. Well, we'll see when they match up here. It won't be tonight here on the channel, but at some point they will match up. All righty, so it's going to be Sten Boulay with it. Sten Boulay can't get a shot off, and we play on here on the power play. Devin Barrett out now on the power play, moving it around, and he can't get a shot off either. Good sliding play by the Thunder Bay defenseman. We have just over a minute to play here. Another puck battle, and... It's going to be Thunder Bay with a chance. Steve St. Pierre coming in. He has a chance to score, but he needs... Oh, no, we're in the attack shot A. I'm sorry, attack shot A. And he scores. He does score. On the breakaway, Steve St. Pierre 
beats Michonne, and it's 7-3. to three. It's a little late, though. Hans Lagar on the assist, and that will end the game. But that was a good one, though. They, they put on quite the show, Thunder Bay, and let's end it here. So... Those are our final scores of opening night here in the CCL. We had Rockford, the only road team to get the win as they beat Saskatoon 4-3. to Tulsa falls to Indianapolis 5-3. to As you just saw, Regina over Sun Thunder Bay 7-3. to And then the first game that we played, Springfield, with a 7 nothing football score over Dayton. So let's go to our standings, and here we are. So as you can see, uh, Thunder Bay in Dayton at the bottom. We'll go to our summary. Let's see what's going on with everybody here. So we have a uh, – who's our points leader here? It's going to be Kevin Hernandez of Springfield with a goal and three assists. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see. We have sh we have shutouts now. Okay, I think we're going to fix that to SO instead of SHO. But uh, shutouts now. So, yeah, so Jonathan Coleman of Springfield did pick up the shutout. If we go to our highlights, we can see the best wins for Dayton. Uh, and the worst defeats. So um, Dayton didn't. They haven't got a win yet. So their worst defeat is their only game, seven nothing. So that's how this works out. This is kind of fun. Um, and the most memorable game of the night that was the Tulsa Indianapolis game, when Indianapolis won five to three. We had four lead changes in that game, and the fans voted that as the game of the day so far. So let's check on our teams. Springfield Ozarks. Some stats for them. And, again, I'm not going to go through every team here, but let's check on uh, Dayton. Not doing too well, the Dayton Bombers. They don't have anybody with a goal and assist or a point or anything like that. <laughs> Poor Dayton. <laughs> so, so that is that. So let's see. Upcoming games. Uh, so tomorrow night we have more games here. Yeah, we're not going to play anything here tonight, but Rockford uh, goes to Dayton. So Rockford won on the road. They're on the road again in Dayton. Thunder Bay will host Saskatoon. Each team lost in uh, Regina. With their one uh, one win, we'll go into Tulsa, who hasn't won yet. And then the two undefeated teams, in Indianapolis and Springfield, they will play as well. So that is that. And come back to Studio B. And uh, that was fun. So we got some fictional things going on here. It's fun. The fictional is fun. This game just lends itself to fictional. It really does. I'm glad they put it in the computer game. So isn't Thunder Bay the name of the Hulk Hogan TV show? It could be. It could be. And uh, I can't wait to play Thunder Bay Dayton. That's going to be fun. You know, I like the bad teams. So, anyway. Hey, so that's another look at um, the newest uh, version of uh, Stone Cold Hockey, PC version. As they added the fictional in there, it's fun. They've changed a few things as well. Again, every day they just they just chip away at that stone. And, boy, this thing is almost polished, ready to go. Really, I keep saying that. But every day they, they surprise me with some more things. And um, so I'm just trying to get you guys excited because I'm excited. And I know I, I know a lot of you guys are going to be picking up this game. And a lot of you already have the board game, which is super, super fun as well. I need to go back and play more of that as well. But I'm having some fun uh, here on the PC version. But anyway, hey, I'm Dave. You guys enjoy your Friday night. Um, have a good one. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'll probably see you tomorrow. I'm off tomorrow. As I told you, my, my truck broke <laughs> right in the middle of the highway. That was pretty scary. Um, so I think my engine is cooked. I really do. So I'm, I'm hoping it's not too, too bad. But So I'm taking tomorrow off from work because I just don't have a car to get to the rink, and I'm a little stressed out. So I'm going to play some games, and I'm going to just have my decaf coffee and relax with you guys this weekend, and hopefully we'll have some fun together. So I'm Dave from Studio B. We'll talk to everybody later.